At the time of this recording, there were a number of retro gaming distributions actively being implemented for the Raspberry Pi 5. However, in this video, we'll take a look at how to get started with retro gaming on the Pi 5 using an experimental version of Recall Bots. If you're new to retro gaming on the Pi 5, we'll cover the setup from beginning to end, perhaps saving you hours of watching several different videos. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. For this video, I'll be using the Canikit Raspberry Pi 5 Starter Kit. If you need more details on how to set up the Pi 5 itself, I'll place a link in the upper right to a video to help with that. We'll assume at this point you have your Pi 5 with the heatsink and fan already installed. If you don't already have one, you will need a micro SD card for installing Recall Box. I'll be using this 128GB Gigastone micro SD and I'll place a link in the video description for everything I mentioned in this video should you need it. We'll start by inserting the micro SD card into a USB card reader and connect it to a PC. Open a browser on another computer and visit raspberrypi.com forward slash software to download Raspberry Pi Imager. Pi Imager is available for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and the Raspberry Pi itself. In my case, I'll be selecting the download for Windows and follow the prompts to install it to my computer. Leave the Run Raspberry Pi Imager option checked and then just click the Finish button. Pi Imager will start up. Here I have version 1.8.5. Under Raspberry Pi Device, click the Choose Device button. There are a number of Pi models to choose from, but we'll pick the Raspberry Pi 5. Now click the Choose OS button. Scroll down until you see Emulation and Game OS. Select that, then select Recall Box. Here we'll select Recall Box for the Raspberry Pi 5 experimental version. In the near future, the experimental designation will most likely be removed, so we'll go ahead and select it. Under Storage, click the Choose Storage button. Select your micro SD card from the list. I'll select the 128GB card. Now just click the Next button. You'll then be prompted if you're sure you want to erase everything on the card. If you're sure, click the Yes button. PyImager will then download and write the recall box image to the micro SD card and then verify that the write was successful. Once done, click the Continue button and close out of Raspberry Pi Imager and safely remove your micro SD card. On the Pi 5, insert the micro SD card into the slot at the bottom. You will need a controller. I'll be using this clone wired Xbox 360 controller and plug it into one of the black USB 2.0 ports. Connect the micro HDMI cable to the connector to the right of the USB-C power port. Now plug in the USB-C power cable. The Pi 5 will power on and the front LED will show green. I'll slide the display over and the recall box setup process will begin. Let's transition over to the video capture so you can get a better look. After the installation completes, you'll be presented with the recall box UI. There are some great freeware games already pre-installed if you want to jump in and try them out. One of the first things I like to do is turn off the background music. Press the start button on your controller, move down the sound settings, highlight audio mode, and move left or right to change it to no sound. Now when you back out, there will be no background audio. But what if you aren't using a controller that is auto-detected or perhaps wireless? Just plug in a keyboard. Press enter to bring up the start menu. Use the arrow keys to navigate down the sound settings. Press the A key to select, the arrow keys to move left or right, and the S key to go back. If your controller is or is not automatically detected and mapped, it's still a good idea to remap the buttons. Press the start button on your controller or enter on the keyboard. Move down to controller settings. Select configure a controller. Press A on the controller or keyboard. 
Press and hold a button for a few seconds on the controller until it's detected. Then go through pressing each of the buttons for D-pad up, down, left, right. If any buttons don't exist on your controller, you can also just press the down direction to skip over it. Once all the buttons have been mapped, you'll typically want to map the select button to the hotkey. Then just press A on OK and B to go back and we're done with the button mapping. You'll need recall box on the network to copy files to it, so if you have a nearby ethernet cable, just plug it into the port at the back. This will be much faster than Wi-Fi. However, you can also use Wi-Fi. Press start on your controller, move down to network settings, select enable Wi-Fi, and press A to turn it on. Select your network name or SSID from the list, after a brief delay, you'll see Wi-Fi enabled, just press A. Move down to Wi-Fi password, and using either the joystick or the keyboard, enter your Wi-Fi password. If using the joystick, you can press up or down to change the character set, A to select the character, and the start button once done. Once connected, you may not immediately see your IP address. Go back and back into network settings until you see connected. Below that, you'll see IP address. You may want to jot it down or remember it. We may need it for the next step. You'll also notice the host name is set up as Recallbox. To add games to Recallbox, you'll want to copy them over the network from a separate computer to the Pi 5 running Recallbox. I can't provide links of where to obtain them, but using your favorite search engine, look for the game system and archive for some keywords that may be helpful. You'll likely find something close. For some systems, you'll also need what is known as BIOS files. The BIOS files are the basic input and output system files that are needed to provide basic runtime services for a given system, hardware initialization, and more. Once you've located the files you want to add to Recall Box, here's how to copy them. On the left, I have a drive that has both BIOS and game files, and on the right side, we'll connect to Recall Box. To do that, type backslash backslash and Recall Box. If prompted, enter root and Recall Box root as the password. Additionally, you can type backslash backslash and the IP address that you wrote down earlier. Once you see this list of shared folders, simply double click on the share folder. This is where you'll find the two main subfolders that we'll be using in this video, BIOS, as well as the ROMs subfolder for your games. I'll copy a set of BIOS files for various systems to the share BIOS subfolder. The folders are already created for you for all the systems that Recallbox supports. You'll find those folders under the ROMs subfolder. And at the time of this video, there were 108 systems available. If we pick Atari 2600, for example, we'll find a readme.txt file in the subfolder. If you open that, it'll tell you what file types are supported for the games. For the 2600, it supports .a26, zip files, 7-zip files, and .bin files. This will vary based on each emulator, so do check out the README file for each that you plan to copy. Then, simply copy the files to the appropriate folder. And repeat these steps for any additional games you want to copy for other systems. If you were to remove the Recallbox microSD card and insert it into your Windows PC, Windows won't recognize the XFAT partition that contains the share with your BIOS and ROMs. It is possible to use a tool such as Disk Genius to read and write files directly to the microSD card. However, you'll need Disk Genius Professional to do that, and it costs about $100. US If you want to use that software, I'll place a link in the description below for a 30% off coupon. I don't get any commission if you decide to register your copy just trying to save you some money. After copying your games, they won't immediately show up in the list. You'll need to update the game list first. Press the start button, move down to UI settings, then select update game lists. Select yes to update the game list. Recall box will then restart 
and the games will now show up in the list. You'll need to do this anytime you add new games. If you have games that won't start, there is a good chance you're missing the BIOS files. To check, press the Start button, move down to BIOS Checking. From here, you can see what BIOS files are missing and if the specific emulator or core will be able to run the game or not. If I select Dreamcast, I have a handful of games copied. When I select a game, there is no artwork or game information. This can be easily corrected by using the scraper. Press Start, select Scraper, and under Systems, select the system you want to scrape. I'll select Sega Dreamcast. Go back, select Scrape Now. The artwork and game information will then be downloaded from the internet. Keep in mind there are additional scrapers available, and some have daily limits on the number of games that can be scraped or require creating an account. Then when we go back in, we'll have the artwork and game information for all the games. Let's briefly check out Hydro Thunder while we're here. To exit a game, press Start and Select at the same time to return back to the game list. If you have games that won't run and missing BIOS files don't appear to be the issue, you can also try changing the emulator. In the main menu, select Advanced Settings, then Advanced Emulator Configuration. Select the system you want to change, in this case I'll pick N64. Select the Emulator option and try one of the other emulators in the list. I'll pick Love Retro Parallel N64. There are other options you can change, such as shaders or shader set if you want to add scan lines. Now let's check out Mario Kart 64. Lastly, I want to show you the proper way to shut down Recall Box. Press Start to enter the main menu, then press Up, select Quit, and select Shut Down System. This will close all open files and shut down the Pi 5. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope what you found in this video will help you get up and running with Recall Box on your Raspberry Pi 5 a bit easier. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. It really does help the YouTube algorithm show this video more often. And if you didn't like it, well, just click the down button twice. Of the games I tested, they played very well. Some games that didn't run as smoothly on the Pi 4 ran smoothly on the Pi 5. I'm hopeful that the Recall Box team will add more emulators in the final release, but what is already available makes it a great option if you want to get started with retro gaming on the Pi 5 today. What other systems and games would you like to see running on the Pi 5? Comment below and let me know. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing so. It's of course free. And uh, with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.